Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So today we're going to have a look at um, managing your uh, media files, basically just using the uh, KID3 tagger. And um, I, I already, I, I hit on this program in a video a while back when I was talking about uh, just media management in general, but um, I, I got the idea to do this video about halfway done with what I was doing. Uh, so if I remember correctly, I still have a few more of these to do, but but basically um, I have a little mp3 player here and uh, I remember when mp3 players first came out They were uh, quite fascinating devices a friend of mine had one when they were still a literal laptop hard drive Connected to an LCD screen and some probably Linux software in the background and uh, You know I since then I mean around I want to say 2002 2003 I got my first real good mp3 player I've had an, an Arcos was a really good one and then I got a creative nomad, which was good and uh, The nomad eventually died out and I got a little smaller creative and they were I don't know, like 30 gigabyte at the time and uh, that was pretty good. And then when that one died out, I didn't have one for a little while because I had phones, although I don't put my whole media library and I save money on phones by getting, you know, the cheapest ones I can. Um, the Galaxy is nice because I can still put an SD card in that, but I really don't put a lot of music on there. But what I always have done a lot of organizing and, and um even before people use cloud services, before MP3s were popular and all this kind of stuff, I had a very large sermon archive, which I got by being on the mailing list for a lot of different groups. And um, so really I haven't ever put a lot of music on my MP3 players, but I've always had a lot of sermons and things. And um, one of the things is uh, I used to do a lot of work with kids inside this large collection of Adventures and Odyssey that I used for... Uh, doing uh, a lot of illustrations with with the kids and and even to this day I absolutely love the stories for their depth even though they were for kids stories um, but nevertheless you know like uh, uh, I was listening to um, the um, uh, radio uh, theater presents um, uh, was it Chronicles of Narnia and uh, uh, Douglas Grisham, who was C.S. Lewis's stepson, uh, he had introduced the magician's nephew by saying that C.S. Lewis loved reading children's stories as an adult because of the depth you got out of them. And even to this day, there's so much depth in these odysseys. And so to get away from all of this crazy technology I have all around me when I'm cooking in the kitchen and I try and cook for about an hour or so a day just to get away from the technology and and things I have this little mp3 player that just kind of stays up in the kitchen and I have literally just cycle through and I have been doing this for about six months now I've just been cycling through the adventures and odysseys and um, I have an extensive collection as, as you will see um, but uh, what had occurred to me is that a few of these got tags mislabeled and a few of them uh, have a couple songs mislabeled so to show you what I'm talking about and I hope you will be able to see this. Um, but over here I have my uh, Adventures and Odyssey tags here. And hopefully you can see this. Uh, okay, come on. A little bit more. There you go. Okay, so what you'll see is you go through. And I f actually have all of the discs for all of these. Uh, there's, I think, before volume 50, I think I'm only missing, I think, four discs. So 36, 37, 38, and you'll see 39 is missing. Well, I have 39. Um, it is just not showing up in the list. And then you'll see 41 is not showing up in the list. I think I'm lacking 46. So we get down to the bottom, and then you'll see there's 45, there's 39, there's 41. And I was like, what is going on with that? <laughs> and uh, I put these out, and, I, and I, I, I was reasonably sure I tagged them. Of course, I looked at the most recent one I got, and even the most recent one I got, there's things out of place. So as you go through there, um, you'll see that things are out of place. And so I'm like, well, I want to get all these in the right order. And so I was trying to figure out what is wrong. And I looked at them and everything's there. And I'm like, was it when it was put on or whatever else? So I finally plugged this in the Windows computer, looked at the ID tags. And the ID tags are showing up and it's blank. I'm like, well, I know there's ID tags on those. 
Um, so I plugged them back in over here on my Ubuntu computer, which is the computer I use where I manage all of my media. And I looked at everything and it turns out that the problem is, is that there's ID tag twos on there, but I did not have ID tag one on some of these volumes. And this thing here apparently only reads the ID, t ID tag version one. And so what we need to do is fix the... Uh, fix these media files so that they all have the IDT tag version ones in addition to the twos and then I'm going to fix the titles on that and then there was one volume where I had mislabeled a few of them and I knew I had done that a while ago um, and I thought I had corrected them a while ago I probably corrected them in my master backup archive but it didn't get propagated to my computers and I think my Odyssey collection from my Windows 7 computer was the version that got put on the NAS drive because it did not require me digging out of the closet for backups. And so we're going to fix that on the NAS drive that serves to everything in the house. And so hopefully uh, we will get that taken care of. I already fixed it on the Windows 7 computer just on its own. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, mess with the uh, Kid 3 tagger. And... Hold on a second. I have to do some manual transitions here. So you'll see that we are on Ubuntu. So um, if you uh, have followed my Ubuntu videos, uh, I do not absolutely hate Ubuntu. In fact, I really like it. Um, particularly if I'm in a lot of heavy terminal work, um, Ubuntu is really nice for a lot of heavy terminal work. For some reason, I love the format. If I'm so, if I'm building AWS servers or something, I I prefer. I actually do all that on my Ubuntu computer here. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through, and I'm not sure how I end up in deep purple. I think I was just looking for stuff. So what we're going to do here is uh, I put my image down, I think, in the lower corner, and hopefully that should not interfere with anything. Let me pull up OBS and just double check where my image is. Good. This is a little sloppy, but that's all right. Uh, I'm not bothering putting on a second monitor today. I'm just uh, wanting to get this out. So I think right now I'm actually in my music directory. So you can keep going up uh, to get to your music directories. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the desktop because the desktop is actually, I've gone onto my NAS drive. I've pulled all of the files out. I've already fixed volume 19. The problem is these Aloha ones got mixed up with this disc here. And that's what this disc is because I was pulling this out to see if uh, what happened and actually what it looks like actually happened here is yeah here's what actually happened why that that why that occurred is on the back of the disc they're actually on the back of the CD they're actually in a different different order um, as as they are on here and that's actually why those got mislabeled to begin with is because the discs on the back, on the back here, it kind of says that Aloha is 4, 5, and 6. In reality, it's 7, 8, and 9. So you know what? Let's just go ahead and fix that too. Um, may as well because it's here. So to fix these track numbers, um, I'm just going to have these guys open. Of course, uh, if you're used to FTP uh, managers, just kind of has a feel of that. I have my main directories down here, and I have my working directory up here. Kind of reverse because FileZilla, the main directories at the top, and the working directories on the bottom. But... That's how this works. So we're going to change this to um, 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6. So we need to make sure we change the file type and we need to make sure we change the track number. And we're going to do on the tag 1 and the tag 2. Now tag 3, I don't know if I have anything in the house that uses tag 3. So I'm just going to leave those blank wherever I have them. So what we're going to do is up here in the file name, I'm going to change these to, uh, let's see, 7, 8, and 9 I think we said. And then down here with the track, also 7, 8, and 9. And you'll notice that we get a little save icon over here. And over here we have 9, 9, and 9. And then here we're going to change these back to 4, 4, 4. Five, 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 and six, six, and six. 
All right. So once we have all the changes done that I'd like to do, I'm going to, you'll see that there are six different save icons. We need to come up to the very top and hit the save button and that will save everything. And so now all of the tags are correct. All right. So there's volume 19. So we are fixed up and ready to go. So that can go back onto my NAS drive. All right. So now we're going to have a look at 39 and see what's going on here. So what we see here, and this is one of those volumes that was not showing up. Well, the reason it's not showing in the list correctly is because this thing apparently only reads the tag type one and the tag type one is blank. And so what we're going to do is you just need to come up here and copy from tag two. But if you'll notice there's something else missing, I apparently don't have the artist in there. And let me just double check if the artist is important. So yeah, I want the artist listed in there as well because that's going to fix that. So I have no idea why that uh, was never included. So what I'm actually going to do is just copy this and then I'm going to come in here, highlight all of them and just paste the artist in. So now that'll fix the artist on every one. So now what I need to do is come over onto each of these guys and I just need to come up here, open up my tag one, which is blank, and I can come over to the uh, far right and hit from tag two and it will uh, um, open everything up. I'm not sure why that's showing up as red. Um, it might be too much information for that. So it's indicating that it's cutting it off. And so I think that that's what it's going to do. So we're probably going to get red about everywhere. Um, and it does look like that's probably going to be the case. We'll go ahead and double check, make sure that doesn't totally break everything um, when we're done here. But you can see it, it is very nice. Um, okay, so that's the one we already did. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm actually not sure if I can grab every one of these open up. We're going to go ahead and try that on the last couple here. So let's go ahead and forgot to test if I could do that. So open this up and from tag two, let's see. Yes. Okay, good. So that saved me some time just thinking about doing that. Just double check everything else, make sure it all looks good. Let's hit the save and everything's red. So I'm not sure what that's going to happen. Okay. So everything's good. So I guess all that was going to happen is it just told me that these guys here were going to be cut off. All right. So volume 40, I think volume 40 uh, is one of the ones that I had already fixed. So that's looking good. And before I got the grand idea to run this as a video, because I thought it'd be useful. Okay. And 45 is my other one. All right. So again, we'll notice that the artist is missing from all these guys. And I'm not sure if uh, um, I'm not sure which computer I coded 45. I know I know volume 41 and um, I think volume 39. I think we're probably done on the Ubuntu computer. I cannot recall which. In fact, some of these I'm pretty sure I did I did on the Windows computer too. So I'm not sure how all the tags got messed up everywhere. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and paste that in. That should fix everybody there up and now we're going to highlight everybody here open up tag one and copy from the previous tag all right so just do a quick double check everything there looks good go ahead and hit our save button so now we actually should have everything taken care of so what we're going to do now i'm going to go ahead and plug this device in and what we're going to do is first I'm going to drop all these on the NAS drive and while that's loading up we're going to uh, come over here so I think that's under sermons and adventures and odyssey and uh, if you've ever uh, if never actually been to focus on the family where you do these uh, particularly if you have kids or anything um, you can actually go down there and they have a little recording studio and you can record your own episode of Adventures and Odyssey. So that's what this one is here. This is one of my uh, littles in Big Brothers Big Sisters uh, about, I don't know, actually about seven or eight years ago we went down there and 
So this is our adventures and adventures and odyssey together. It was a lot of fun. Um, so that was, uh, that was kind of fun there. So now we have these guys all need updated. So, and this is my main master NAS drive here. So I'm going to actually just start by deleting these. So 19, uh, 39, 40, 41, 45, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, sounds good. I'm going to delete these guys, and then now we're going to add these back onto the drive, and so now we should have everything properly copied. Come up here in Ubuntu, and you can see the current status. About a minute left. So now anytime, uh, and I remember that I had this one out of place the other day. I was going to listen to that and I'm like, huh, that one of those files is completely out of place there. So so now, uh, now these will all be pushed to all my devices as I use my main NAS drive here. I'll just have to remember to do a, another backup here in the next couple days after I get some other systems uh, updated. I plan on doing some uh, image updating in the system as well and... Uh, a few other things like that. Let's see, 34, 35, we skip 35, 36. Okay. 35, 36. We're gonna come over here and... Okay. We're gonna open up this guy here is where these files are. So I'm gonna minimize this one. And I'm going to do the same over here. So this is actually the device we're working on now. So we're going to fix this in, was it 19, 40, 41, 45, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, you know what? 40 was actually my test one. I don't need to actually do 40. I pulled 40 on there just to look at the differences between the files. But 19, 40. 39, 41, and 45 are the ones that need fixed. Delete, take 40 off of there, and copy these guys on. Uh-oh, not enough space, huh? We're very close to the line here. Actually, I think what I need to do is I need to come down and just do an empty trash. That should open up enough space for me. All right, let's see. I shouldn't be that close to the line. Start with 19. We're just going to start with one by one. And I did not imagine that adding tags would add that much extra space to these. Really? Huh. Go away, OBS. See if they actually all deleted. So that one's there, 39. Properties. Free space, there's 200 megabytes of free space listed. Really? Interesting. Let's see, I know I have a lot from John MacArthur on here that I probably can get rid of. Uh, just because I use this device more for listening to that than these. Let me just see. The funny thing is I had all of those on here, I'm just not sure why why those are, are not working now. Uh, 
let's get rid of this for now. See, it's not clearing the... Do you remember how to actually clear the thing out? Because it's not actually clearing all of the, the deleted files. Um, that's kind of one of the dis downsides of of uh, Ubuntu. I could never get it to clear. I know if I drop something in the trash, it actually clears on Linux Mint. So I may not be able to actually copy those over without opening this up on, um, uh, on a, another computer. Um, and if somebody, I'm sure somebody's going to correct me, like how exactly am I finally freeing these files up? Um, because deleting the files should actually do that. Anyway, I'm not going to waste any more time on that. I will resolve this problem um, when I get the chance. What I am going to do, actually, let me unmount it and then remount it. And I'm going to see if uh, see if that will help free the space up. It might also just be a function of this of this device uh, that it might need to uh, clear everything out before. Uh... Okay, we're just gonna plug that in and let that go again. Uh, in the meantime, though, the other thing I wanted to show you how to do is how to create a um, how to create a playlist. Uh, I do not need you properties. See, it still only says we have 224 megabytes free, so um, I'm gonna need to figure out why it's why it's not letting me do that. So I'll do that on my own time. Um, I just need to get this guy cleared out so that I can add the other media files. I'm going to do it on my Linux Mint computer. Uh, but the next thing we're going to have a quick look at is how to create a playlist, should you want to do that. So now, first I'll say playlists are completely not compatible with this particular device. You have to literally uh, create the playlists on the device itself. Uh, but supposing that you have other music like I do have, what I'll do is I'm going to use this guy, navigate to music. So here I have quite an extensive music. Well, not an extensive according to some people's terms, but let's go to Pink Floyd. Um, and let's say we want to create a playlist of, um, you know, of maybe some great live stuff, right? So... You can come down here, and uh, if I look down some of the live things I have, Delicate Sounds of Thunder was a live one, and In the Flesh was a live Roger Waters. Is there anybody out there was live The Wall? I was a big Pink Floyd advocate. I This live at Pompeii is actually an Italian import, all done in, in Italy. But if you are familiar with the live at Pompeii, uh, that's what that was. Um, Pulse was live. I'm just going to go through here and find some of my favorite live things. Uh, this was Dark Side of the Moon live. And if you've never heard the symphonic, it's called Us and Them, Symphonic Pink Floyd. Oh, that's really worth listening to. Okay. And of course, live in Berlin is a series of artists at the time of the falling down of the Berlin Wall. So... All right, so what we'll do here is to create a playlist, what you want to do is um, just come in and highlight the files that you want on your playlist. So if I think back about these, uh, just looking over some of the songs, one of my, actually, time on this album was awesome. Now I'm going to just hold the control button. Wish you were here. I always hated the song Money, by the way. It's the only Pink Floyd song I don't like, um, which is funny because it's probably their most popular song. Um, in the flesh is a Roger Waters. They had some absolutely awesome uh, uh, songs on here, including some old classic Roger Waters. And the song "Each Small Candle" totally rocks. Is there anybody out there actually features the song "What Shall We Do Now," which was cut from the original studio album, but is on the movie? Hey, you! I love that song. It's one of my favorites. 
Um, Echoes, live version from Live at Pompeii. And Saucer Full of Secrets from Live at Pompeii is also a little odd. Yeah, careful of that, Eugene. Why not? Can't go wrong with that. Um, and from Paul, let's see. I always like the song Great Day for Freedom. Uh, Pulse Disc 2 had most of the, um, uh, actually it had all of Dark Side of the Moon and then a few other songs. Uh, let's grab this version of Time as well. And then, uh, there really wasn't anything super good there. So now what we're going to do is, now that I have everything highlighted I want in my playlist, I'm going to create a playlist. And then you can set where the directory is. So you can say same as directory name. Um or you can do a format. So the format is album and artist. I, since this is a playlist, I'm just gonna say Live Floyd, and then create in, you can do the top level directory or the current directory. Just go current directory, which I, hmm, we'll do top level directory. We're gonna have to hunt for it. I think this will end up throwing it in my home folder. Format is the M3U. And then we can sort by name or sort by any given ID tags. So you can actually come down here and sort by however you want it. In my case, I'll just go by the name. And then it'll actually go in the order that we put them in. Um, use relative path or use full path. If you're going to move this playlist, use the full path. If you're going to create it and you know exactly, like if you have created a playlist directory specifically for playlists and you know where it is, you know, you can probably get away with your relative, but I'm going to use full path just so we can move the thing around and, and still get it. Um, and then we can write only list of files or whatever. So we're going to hit OK, and then that will, doesn't look like anything happened, but that will have given us a playlist. Like I said, based on where I have that there, I think that's actually going to turn up in my home folder. But I'm not completely sure. Okay, there we go. It just turned up in the music. That's right. I was in the music folder. That's where I'm at. So the home directory of the music folder, which is specified here. So now here, if I double click this, then it'll play some Pink Floyd and I'll get some copyright strikes. So we're not going to do that. But it'll open this up in whatever your default is. In my case, it'll open this in Banshee and just start playing some Floyd live. So that's how you can use Kid 3 to create a playlist. A nice and easy way to create playlists, uh, certainly better than a lot of the other systems I've seen. So we've covered tags, how to fix things. Uh, we've looked at uh, creating the playlists. Um, of course, the revert file will allow you to change, uh, move something back that has not yet been changed. Um, otherwise, it's a, it's a pretty easy system and software to use. Uh, this is the preferred method that I use if I want to do anything at all with tagging audio files. I just I've looked at a lot of the programs. This one just hands down the best. So uh, check it out. It's uh, Kid3. You can download it from any other repositories. Um, it, well, at least the Ubuntu repository. I'm pretty sure it's on Linux Mint as well. Um, so uh, with that, uh, this is a software feature, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.